Alright, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist and welcome to my YouTube channel. So uh, the video today is going to be another critique video. You guys seem to really uh, like these a lot. So uh, this came from Derek. There's four pages we're going to look at today. And he did a really great job with these pages. I've already kind of done his critique in the course and, and, and showed him all these things. So I won't rehash all of it. But there were a couple of things that uh, are, are easy fixes that really will, I think, improve the pages quite a bit. But uh, overall, it was, a, it was a great job, and I really liked a lot of the colors that he chose. So uh, we're going to start with uh, this first panel here, and I want to talk about something called uh, um, atmospheric perspective. And uh, basically, as things go back into the background and further and further into the atmosphere, there's more air in between. And so things tend to get less saturated, and less contrasty okay so if uh, something is high contrast close to you if you put it 100 yards away there appears to be less contrast this uh this first panel is a good example of of what i mean here if you look at the values and just looking at how dark things are for example this tree and the uh, pyramid shadow back here on the left if you look at the color picker you'll see they're really not really that much difference from each other. They're very close as far, not really in hue, uh, but uh, in the color they are, but in the value, they're very uh, similar. So what that tends to do, your brain tries to put them in the same plane because it says, this is about this dark and this is about this dark. And instead of doing this, where's my camera? Instead of looking like this, you know, your brain tries to pull them together side by side. And so it actually decreases the depth that you see in your in your in your panel here. So, uh, really easy way to fix that would just be to, uh, you know, lighten the the pyramid uh, quite a bit. But you can do that throughout the entire scene. You know, so, and he kind of did that here on, on some of the other places. You know, the, the the green in the front is a little bit darker and more saturated than the green over here. That's actually a good use of that. So this um, this space across here, you know, that's 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 the what he's using. He's using the same principle there. Uh, I'm just saying you can basically do the same thing. Why is this selecting? There we go. Uh, you can basically do the same thing, except you get a lot more distance between this and this. So you can push that concept even more. And also as a quirk, the, the sun is here, uh, but the brightest um, reflection goes this way, which is kind of strange. It would actually be in here too, but other than that, pretty cool page. And, and I really like, like I said, the colors overall are, are very vibrant and seem to really fit the whole kind of cartoony, almost animated kind of element uh, to this stuff. And um, and you could even do that on the people. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this to Derek, but uh, same principle here. You can kind of, these people back here, if you wanted to, you know, go a little less saturated, uh, a little less contrast and it helps sell the fact that we're going back in space. And in comics, you can actually push this even further when it's not even reality. You know, it's not really realistic. But you'll you'll notice that you'll see the Hulk like sometimes, you know, in a or whoever, you know, in a fight, and the arm that's way back here will be lighter than what's in the front. You know, and so you can really push that in comics as a way to trick your audience into creating more depth than there really is. <laughs> so, And uh, on this page, uh, I think there's just a couple of things. Uh, one, I, I think the figures on this get a little bit lost, um, you know, and you could just by creating a few, whoops, excuse me, just by creating a few little maybe brighter spots in the, in the rendering, um, not necessarily completely white like I just chose, but, but something that is a little bit brighter in, in places, uh, obviously I'm not doing this very well, but uh, it would help to create those little focal points and help to sell that just a little bit since they're not, since they're all pretty close in value to the, the tower they're working on back there. Also, the, uh, the rendering is not really that different in some cases from the base color. If you look at the bicep here and the underarm here, there's, if you look at the color picker, they're just barely moving. So, you know, you could push this, you know, either way. You can make the highlights lighter. You can make the 
the dark parts darker you know maybe not that dark but but uh, you know however you want to do that uh, but you could definitely create more contrast in places like that especially with the characters that are right up front you know that can kind of work with the ones in the background because you want less contrast but but in the front you know you can really push push that whole concept and lighten up some of those highlights in this panel uh, kind of similar to what we talked about in the the first panel the first page we looked at the the value range of of all of this is is very close you know if i if i look at this in black and white bear with me a second uh, you can see it's a little bit darker back here uh, toward the front but really uh, not so much uh, there's not a ton of difference i think you could push that a little bit more basically so if i'm let me just do a quick selection and show you guys so get my lasso tool and I'm just gonna be just an ugly quick selection just to show you what I mean here it doesn't have to be perfect all right and I'm gonna grab I don't have his layers and everything but I'm just gonna darken this a little bit and you can see already even looking at this in black and white and sometimes I do this I'll, I'll put my uh, this is just a black layer in color mode um, to show it in black and white that I can turn off and on and I'll even make my adjustments with that layer on so that I can really get the value differences that I want and then when I turn it off you can see uh, just with a quick two second levels adjustment there's a lot more depth in that page and, and I could push that even more you know this uh, palm tree thing is even closer so if I wanted to go a little bit darker on that then again it's just instantly creating a whole bunch more depth in the in the frame than than what's there originally so Again, quick, easy fixes that don't really take a whole lot of time. All right, so timeout. I want to do a quick insert here. I was editing this video and realized there's one other thing that I forgot to mention here. So uh, on this same page, uh, I want to talk about the, the sun here for a second, and really more actually the glow from the sun on this section. So the, the color of the sky on the base color of the sky on these pages is this nice kind of turquoise color, which is actually really cool. I actually like that a lot. It's not just a default baby blue sky. So it works really well with all the oranges and the sand colors and all that stuff. But it looks like what happened is you think, well, the sun's yellow, right? So I'm going to put a yellow glow around the sun. And it looks like he probably used a soft brush to do that. But look at the color picker now. When I start color picking these colors around the sun, you can see that they are green. <laughs> so when you layer, you know, yellow and blue, like the old commercial for Ziploc, you guys are probably not old enough to remember this, um, but uh, yellow and blue make green when you mix them. So when you mix a yellow soft highlight color that has some opacity and so the under color, the base color is coming through, you actually get green, which is why the uh, the sky is trending toward green. As we get further away, you can see it's getting more and more back to that blue and the color picker all the way back to that kind of that base color there. But as you get closer to the sun, if you look at that color picker, it's getting more and more green, right? So all the way almost to yellow right before it gets to there. But so uh, the sun generally, when you're looking at the sun against a uh, just a blue sky it actually looks pretty white you would want to use a pretty bright white color if you're going for kind of a realistic sky uh, and uh, and if you don't you know those kind of things when you come across something and you're just not sure how to do something like that then just look for reference you know find a picture and and, and kind of base what you're doing off of that so anyway time in all right and a lot of these things we sort of talked about already but uh, you know, with with this color, this building way back here in the background, uh, being really close in value and saturation to what's in front, we kind of talked about that. And then this page is a good example of it's a very busy page, and the action of what's actually happening in this panel is here. All right, this is the the two lead characters on this page, but they're kind of lost. They're very small in the panel, so. It's up to the colorist to help, you know, create that focus and, and, and make sure the reader is finding the action in that panel. So what I would do here, and I'm just going to do this very quickly again, just to show you how easy this would be, especially if I had, if I actually had the, the layers, this would be even easier. But just really quickly, I'm going to 
select the the foreground which in this case is not really the important part of the action let's just do this and very roughly do this all right and again if you actually had the flat this would be way easier but um i'm going to grab my either levels adjustment or uh, actually instead of doing that because there is so much in here let's do this let's just put a color in here and i'm just going to set this to multiply and this is probably a little too dark so let's lighten it up and we could play around with the, what color it is maybe something like that but you can see that what we've done here was we've kind of framed the action I'm, your eye is immediately attracted to bright things and so if you surround the action with something that is, why can't i color on that there we go uh, if you surround the action with things that are dark then you your brain sort of wants to look past them and if you if you look around and if you guys that read comics if you you look through your books and you'll you'll notice a lot of this where the action is very small in the panel and so the colorist is having to do something to get you to look there uh, and a lot of times they'll either you know darken sections or they might you know barely even render uh you know some of these sections up front so there's less rendering and it's more simple and there's more rendering in the places where it matters you know so uh, again it's another fairly quick uh, th trick you could do there that would uh, help that page read a little bit better help that panel read a little bit better and uh, and then the last one here uh, two things on this one to talk about we have a in the first panel here we got a big big panel with a tiny tiny uh, focal point here again if you check the values and I'm gonna put my color mode layer in black again these and I believe these things on the right and left are columns they're very close in value to the background so again your brain wants to put those in a similar plane so if I just grabbed those two and then let's just darken those a little bit I don't know if the color is gonna be right but all right, so we've already framed that section a little bit better, but we've still got this really, really small bit of action here. So one thing that I like to do on panels like this, and this is going to be kind of quick and rough, but uh, this doesn't really matter what color we use, is I will sort of put a little bit of a, not like that, a little bit of a, a halo effect around and this is a little bit too dark but just a, an example a little bit of a halo effect around the action and what that does again it sort of pulls your eye toward the center um, and you could go a little bit brighter maybe around that spot even you know where he is if you wanted to but uh, uh, and he did this a little bit with this bright white that you're seeing uh, right here that, that that bright white is kind of pulling your eye there you could pull that even you know, push that even more along here and make that brighter yeah and then second thing these color gradients that are in here uh, not every color blends into another color easily on its own um, a lot of times you have to put some kind of transition in the middle when you have colors that are pretty much opposite each other on the color wheel you get very strange gray stuff in the middle uh, that doesn't always look right and uh, if you're wanting to blend you know blue all the way to red you know you might have to find something kind of in the middle of that to make that transition a little bit easier uh, and to make it a little bit easier on the eye because it tends to sort of wash out with a strange kind of desaturated stuff going on in the middle again other than that uh, really cool pages really uh, fits the uh, the look of the line art, I think. So um, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I do these for all the students in my coloring course, and that's, there's a link to the description if you want to check that out. Uh, make sure you like the video if you did. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you want more of this. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. <laughs>